Number one, you will receive a word from the Lord. God will not do anything on this earth except through a man, and if you are truly a child of God, you will know when God speaks to you. The Bible says, My sheep hear my voice and they follow it because they know the voice. Imagine they don't understand the voice, then it would be a disaster. God is not a hide-and-seek God, that when He wants to do something, He will now be hiding it to His children. He shows His way to His children, come what may. A breakthrough or a blessing that you've been waiting for starts with a word from the Lord. The Lord will always instruct you on what to do, because instructions are your life. So don't be anxious, besides the Bible told us about anxiousness from the Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, in every circumstance and everything, by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God, and God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Do not begin to walk up and down as if you do not have a helper. The Bible told us in Psalms chapter 121 verses 1 to 8, We'll lift my eyes to the hills around Jerusalem, to sacred Mount Zion and Mount Moriah. From whence shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip or to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand, the side not carrying a shield. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. You have a helper, and he will come through for you. One big thing that God is about to do something in your life, or you are closer to the blessing you've been waiting for, is that he sends his word. It could be healing the Bible made us understand that he sent his word, and that word healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Believe God for a word concerning your next miracle. Number 2. Doors will begin to open. One easy way for God to show you that He is about to do something in your life is that you will notice that doors begin to happen. It could be something unusual, something new that will happen in your life. God will always accompany His word with a sign and His word is bound. He said His word will not come and return to Him void without accomplishing that which it was sent to do. Doors will begin to open up for you. You will start to wonder which opportunity to take, but in this period, you must learn to be careful and not to take opportunities that will draw you out of Christ. It is at this point that the devil will want to strike. The Bible made us understand that he is always looking for whom to devour. Also, we must note that in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12 to 13, it says, For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on an evil day of danger, and having done all the crisis demand, to stand firmly in your place. Know that there are doors the devil can open to a man that will look like God has done great things for you. See the more reasons why you must give yourself to prayer. The Bible made us understand that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. It is in the place of prayer we can tell which door was opened by God and which one wasn't. I pray that the Lord will help you to remain steadfast in Him, in that nothing will shake you that you are confident in the promises and the love of God. Number 3. Nothing you do makes a difference. 
Have you ever set out on a goal, but no matter what you do, it doesn't seem to make a difference? Or maybe it even seems to make matters worse? I've been there too. It makes you want to throw your hands up in the air in defeat. God doesn't want us to give in to defeat, but He does want us to throw our hands up in the air and give it all to Him. Sometimes He keeps our actions from making a difference, because if they did, we would be tempted to take the credit. God deserves the glory. If God is not changing your situation, it's because He needs to change you. He needs to prepare you for the place He's bringing you to. He needs to make sure you are in a place to receive the seed He's going to plant. Is your soil fertile? If not, let Him till the soil of your soul until you are ready for planting. Then you will reap the harvest. The more you let Him have His way, the quicker and more rewarding the journey. Number 4. You begin to encounter obstacles or closed doors. If I tell you it will be a smooth road, then I will be lying to you. See, the devil will not fold his arms and allow you to prosper or to fulfill your purpose. We must understand that the Bible has told us that our fight is not against flesh or blood. So you will begin to encounter some closed doors. Doors closing in your life may seem like a great defeat, but in reality, they could be one of your greatest blessings. You don't want to waste time by going through the wrong door, do you? Then celebrate when God closes one. It wasn't for you. If God wanted that door open, He would have opened it. If He closed the door to something seemingly wonderful, imagine what He has in store for you. When you are about to walk into something great, the devil begins to throw challenges at you that will make the journey harder for you so that you will give up. Refuse to give in to what the devil is doing. He is only trying to distract you from the grand prize. We have a cloud of witnesses around us. We have people who do not want to see our greatness or even stars shining. That is why you should not think that the Lord is not with you when you face trials and temptations. Jesus is ever ready to help you and protect you. The thing is, the devil will never fold his arms and watch you become what God has destined you to be without putting up a fight. He will always want to show his face in a fight, but resist the devil. The Bible made us understand that when you resist the devil, he will flee away from you. Remember to trust in the Lord with all your heart and never lean on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Don't be distracted by what the devil is doing. He is only trying to set up a trap for you, so do not fall onto it. Number 5. You begin to see opportunity in everything. This simply means that you are positive about the situation. Whether it goes wrong or bad, you know that in all things, God is working out good for you. You are confident in the promises of God that God can change your story in no time. You will begin to see opportunity in everything. You are looking out for opportunities and goodness in everything. That you are satisfied in Christ that whether He blesses you or not, you know that He is working out for your good. You understand that the goodness of the Lord is not biased of what you do or do not. And then you begin to rejoice at the promises of God. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. In season and out of season, learn to rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. Knowing that God is a good shepherd will keep your heart at rest. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 23, verses 1 and 6, The Lord is my shepherd, to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with Him, not for my earning it, but for His name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the deep sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for You are with me. Your rod to protect and Your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my brimming cup runs over. Surely or only goodness, mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and His presence shall be my dwelling place.